Hi, well, hello there. I'm Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours. Welcome. This is where the magic happens in this gorgeous kitchen of mine. Everything obviously happens a la Mala style. How's it happen in your kitchen? Today we have an amazing recipe to get through. So in as much as it is a lot of fun chatting with you guys, this chick has got to get this show on the road. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. I'll see you guys back at the end with an amazing dish. Stick around, okay? And on today's menu, it's Dum Alu. Totally non-traditional, of course, because it's the Alamala show. Nothing happens with tradition on this show. So dum alu is actually a North Indian staple. And basically the dum portion of that really means uh, slow cooking. The way you would traditionally make a, um, a biryani, but of course it's not what we're making here today. Uh, where you would actually seal the pot with a piece of dough all around the edges and cook it low and slow for about three to four hours until completely done and simmered to perfection. Now, of course, we're not doing that. Yeah, we're not doing that. So part of the shortcut here is I've already gone ahead and boiled up half boiled five medium to small potatoes and of course I let them cool and completely peel them. Now let's go over some of the stuff here that we're going to add because I would like a beautiful crisp very thin skin on top of these potatoes so when they're simmering in that gravy later on it's going to hold together beautiful and if anybody knows anything about me Lots of my own family make fun of me because guess what? I love to use cornstarch. Yep, you heard it here first, cornstarch. I know. In this bowl, I have two tablespoons of cornstarch, all right? Now to this, what I'm going to add is, and I have over here a quarter of a teaspoon measurement, quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. I guess we're gonna make this pretty easy. I'm gonna go right into the cornstarch quarter of a teaspoon of garam masala over here, quarter of a teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin, goes right in, and a quarter of a teaspoon we're going to put of coriander powder in there. Let me show you. We have coriander powder, right? We put a quarter of a teaspoon in. Then we added a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin powder. Then next we added a quarter of a teaspoon of garam masala. We added a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. There we go, yep, there we go. Quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. And we've added all of those to two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now over here, you might ask me, well, what is this stuff? It looks like dried up bunch of leaves, right? Well, guess what? This is kesari methi. Yes, they're dried leaves. And I have over here one teaspoon measurement. So I'm gonna put this into my hands just like so. And what I'm gonna do, what I love to do with dried herbs, I rub it, roll it gently into my hands until it becomes a fine powder and I let that go. This way it releases all of its natural oils and aroma and looks as beautiful as this, okay? So now we're going to mix this baby up just like this. Looks gorgeous already. Yep, that's all it takes. And now what I'm going to do is add a little bit of salt course to this. There's my pink Himalayan. There it is. Very fine pink Himalayan sole. I'm going to put a couple of pinches of this in there because you want to always season in layers as you cook. And of course, this dumb alu recipe is going to be all about making life very easy and simple. All right, oops, we'll get that later. All right, so we're going to mix this all up once again, just like this. And 
we're going to dust these potatoes. And take one of them, roll it around just like this. Yep, just like that. Make sure all sides are nicely coated. Don't get stingy with the powder. Be very generous, okay? Just like that. And we're gonna roll them all up together. Yep, here we go. And I have to tell you, cornstarch, let me tell you, it not only works as a great thickener if you wanted to thicken gravies, but it adds a beautiful, very, very fine layer of crispness to whatever it is that if you're, especially if you're deep frying. So it works really, really wonders. And I love to use cornstarch for that reason. Because when you don't want to use flour or to have a heavy skin or a heavy coating on anything that you're going to be deep frying, cornstarch is the best. I tell everyone cornstarch is my best friend. And it certainly is. So we have it. We have one more to go. And I'm going to set this aside once I'm done because the next process in this particular recipe is we have some whole spices to toast up, okay? So we're gonna get ready for the next portion. Now we're gonna let these babies sit with that cornstarch and we're gonna just put it aside for a little bit. One last thing I forgot to mention, I'm going to take a piece of hing. Now you could use, hing is basically also known as asafetida, hopefully I said that correctly. You could use the powdered version, which would probably be smart at the moment, but of course I have this stuff whole, so I'm just gonna take like about a couple of pieces, maybe three little tiny pieces, and I am going to pound the crap out of it into my little bowl over here. Watch me. And guys, if you have aggression of any kind, this is probably the smartest way to get rid of that. So, I've already grounded this into a beautiful fine powder. Wow, look at that. All right, and that's just a tiny bit. And that's all you need. This, by the way, is a secret ingredient to a lot of Indian cooking. So for this, all I'm going to do now to do with beautiful potatoes, is I'm just going to add just a little bit to the top. Sprinkle that on, and we're gonna roll those potatoes into them. So that the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to shallow fry them and brown them up on all sides. All right guys, so let's go over here. What right spices we need to toast up. We're going to start with taking about two of these dried red chilies. We're going to, going to be using one bay leaf. Over here, we're going to use some cloves. I'm just opting to use two pieces. That's what it looks like right in there. Yep. Of course, these are green cardamoms, and I'm going to be using two. Then we're going to be using one piece of mace, or rather what's called java tree which is the inside of a nutmeg. There we go. So it looks like, yep. Then we're going to be using some whole black peppercorns and I'm going to be using around about five whole black peppercorns. And the next would be some fennel seeds. Fennel seeds look like this. We're gonna be using a half a teaspoon. And next will be some cumin seeds, whole of course. Cumin seeds look like this, and we're going to be using one teaspoon. Last will be the coriander seeds, and we will be using one tablespoon of coriander seeds. And of course, I almost forgot, we'll be using a little tiny piece. This is right about a half inch or so of a whole cinnamon. I'm not the biggest fan of having a ton of cinnamon, so I'm just opting to use a tiny piece. Okay, so we're gonna start with getting our one bay leaf in. We're gonna get our two red dried chilies. We're gonna go with our tablespoon of coriander seeds right in 
and we're going to go with our teaspoon of cumin seeds. Next, we're going to add our half a teaspoon of fennel seeds. We're going to add our five black peppercorns, or a piece of mace or java three, it's full, or two green cardamom pots, here we go, two pieces of clove. And there you have it. Let's take a good look at what this baby looks like in here. Yep. Looks quite interesting, right? Yes, indeed. And of course, we can't forget that cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon goes right in. I'm gonna crank some heat up on this. Yep, there we go. And we are going to toast these babies up. And after it gets nice and nutty, I'm going to put them into a blender and pulverize the crap out of them. Make them into a very super fine powder. So we're gonna, these spices are toasting up nicely. Just gonna give them a nice little zhuzh. And as you can see, it's starting to smoke just a little bit. That just means everything is nice and fresh and it's getting rid of whatever little moistures there is that's trapped into these dried seeds. So just a few more minutes. And it smells amazing, my gosh, look at that, yep. And then we're going to blend this up. So our spices are in my little uh, ninja here. Take a look at that, yep. And I'm going to put the lid on and let's see what happens here. Let's see what magic happens. All right, my apologies for the noise, but here we go. Let's try it again. There we go. Ooh, baby. I will see you guys back in just a moment when we have powder. So our masalas have completely ground up and this is what we end up with. Looks like this, this beautiful powder, which is still somewhat a bit coarse, but of course we're going to cook that out. It's going to go through another process again. So now we're gonna go ahead and start browning up those potatoes that we so we did before and we rolled in that beautiful cornstarch. So we're gonna heat up in here. I already have in a pan. I went ahead and added two tablespoons of ghee. And of course I chose ghee, which is basically clarified butter because it's actually quite healthy, not as fatty as people think it is. Your body can actually handle this. So ghee actually is my mode of cooking. So I'm gonna heat this up and then we're gonna start adding those potatoes so we can gently brown them uh, pretty much on two or more sides, okay? So time to add these potatoes and I wanna put them in this pan before it becomes screaming hot. And this way you will be able to manage that way better. So we're gonna let this brown up a little on each side. And let's take a look at these potatoes. Yep, doing beautiful things. Yep, that's what we want. We have to be nice and gentle. Getting that nice, beautiful color. Oh, yeah. That's a thing of beauty. those babies brown up a little on the other side. Now I'll tell you what, see how gorgeous they look? That beautiful color and that slight, ever so slight, very thin skin that's on the top. That's what that gorgeous cornstarch does. Our potatoes are continuing to look beautiful. I've just flipped them a little on the other side so we can get try to get about three to four sides browned. So our potatoes are all done and I was able to brown them up each on each side. Look at that. Look at that beautiful thing of beauty. Mmm. 
they look as though I didn't even peel them, huh? Look at how beautiful and golden brown I was able to get them. Gorgeous, right? Yep, now that's my secret with cornstarch. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a fork and prick each one of these and just let them cool a little bit on each side so that when they're added to the gravy, they're able to slowly absorb and become succulent and even more tender and delicious. gravy gets absorbed into this potato and it actually becomes even more succulent and delicious. Now in this pan over here I went ahead and I already added three tablespoons of ghee which I've already melted up. Now I've added one small bay leaf. I'm going to crank up some heat on this. There we go. We're going to put this on a low and slow flame. And then we're going to start adding some stuff to this. So our ghee is getting nice and heated up. And of course, I've added three tablespoons of ghee to be melted, one small bay leaf, and of course, that's an Indian bay leaf. In here, I've already ground it up a quarter of a teaspoon of asafoetida. So this is hing. So I'm going to add this directly to our heated up view. We want to make sure we get everything that's in there. Yep, there we go. And we're going to give this a little stir, just like so. Crank up the heat just a little bit more. And now I'm going to add one medium-sized onion in which I did a rough chop. There we go. And we're going to saute this until it is beautiful and translucent. Kitchen smells amazing. So this is the next process into making the gravy. So once this is all translucent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that ground up uh, homemade masala that we made into a powder. So once this onion becomes soft, translucent, and probably maybe a little bit more on the brown side. So a little bit of caramelization, I'm going to add the garam masala to it and let that cook down for a little bit. The next process in that would be that we need to ground it into a paste. Let's go one step at a time. We're going to analyze these and these are looking gorgeous already. And beautiful, I'm loving what I see here. So we're gonna let this cook for just another minute or two until it becomes a little bit more golden. And then I'm going to add our garam masala mix to this. So our onions are looking beautiful and lightly golden. So this is about the stage in where I want to add our garam masala. There we go. Get all that goodness in there. Excellent. Beautiful. Now we're going to let this cook out the rawness. So we're going to saute this for a few minutes. And after we start to see, I'm going to lower the heat just a tad. Masala starts to release a little bit of its own oils. What I'm going to do is over here, you're probably wondering, what does she have here? Well, I have round about four cups of cherry tomatoes in which I washed and I have this sitting here. So instead of using a canned crushed tomato for the gravy, I'm going to use whole tomatoes. So we're going to let this cook up for just another minute or so. 
and then I'm going to add the tomatoes. Okay, I've chopped up around about a half an inch, or actually a full inch of ginger, and it's a rough chop, it's not a paste, because we're going to make it into a paste, so I'm tossing that in now. Along with, we have what here? Five garlic cloves, whole as it is, because we're going to make this into a paste. So we're going to saute this all together, let it become all beautiful and fragrant. We're going to give this another minute and then add those beautiful cherry tomatoes. And of course, the cherry tomatoes, I have four cups of that. Everything is looking nice and fragrant in here. Starting to stick just a tad and we can see a little bit of those oils are starting to release. Yep, there we go. So this is the time I want to add all of these beautiful tomatoes. Now tomatoes naturally is going to release beautiful moisture and that moisture has a bit of acid in it which as you can see it does beautiful to deglaze my pan see that ta-da cool trick huh yeah so this is going to be absolutely beautiful here I'm going to add now some salt to this and we want to make sure that these here these tomatoes simmer and become beautiful and soft. When that's all done, we're going to grind this into a beautiful, soft, smooth paste. So let's get some salt. Of course, I'm going to be using my pink Himalayan salt. choosing to use because it's again fine but you cannot skimp on seasoning this is the best part and that's where you get to season to the best of your ability it's a nice gentle little stir and it smells amazing in here my goodness is so good wow Look at that, my pan is beautifully deglazed. And I love using this pan. This pan is actually not mine. This is my mom's. And it was, my mom passed earlier this year. But this is one of the last pans that she used and she thoroughly enjoyed using it. And I feel that much closer to her when I use this. So this is a very special pan for me. So, all right, enough of that. We're gonna go ahead, put a lid on this, and let these these tomatoes become succulent and juicy. And let them cook down for quite a bit more. Okay, so let's take a sneak peek at what our tomatoes are doing. Oh, they are doing a beautiful thing right now. They are beautifully melting down, and we love this. All right, so I'm gonna let this cook for another minute or so, and then let this cool, and we are going to grind this into a very fine paste. We're going to puree this completely smooth. All right, I think we're just about at that point here. That's precisely what we want. So our little tomato gravy there is ready. Uh, we're going to add that to our blender. In my blender here, I've added a half a cup of raw cashews because I'm gonna use that as a thickener for my gravy. So I've already added that to this. Now I'm going to add this tomato to this container and then we're going to make it into a paste. So 
Okay, so our paste is done blending up and what I've done is I put it inside of a sieve and what I'm doing is I'm basically pressing it through the sieve because I wanna make sure I have a really smooth, silky gravy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up. And in the meanwhile, we have our pan heating up and we're going to add some more ghee to that. We're going to add round about, I would say, at least three tablespoons of ghee. And look at this, how beautiful, right? Gorgeous, we're pressing through the last of this paste that we've made. And this is with the tomato and look how smooth that turns out to be, right? Look at that, gorgeous. And that we're going to add some more ingredients to that into our pot. So our paste is now nice and beautifully smooth. Taken that out of and pressed through the sieve. So now we're going to add this to this hot ghee. Be very careful as you're adding it, okay? If you don't want splashes, you don't want burns. So we have to be very gentle as we get this out. Make sure to get all of that beautiful goodness out. And let's just slowly and gently, we're going to mix this in. And let this cook for just one minute or so. How beautiful does this look? Absolutely gorgeous. This gravy is beautiful. Now I know there are some people who are allergic to nuts. So at this point, what you would do is when you were blending up that masala paste, for this particular step, you could simply eliminate having to add any type of nuts at all. So you don't need to add cashew nuts to this. I chose to use it because I love the way this looks because I'm just gonna finish with a tiny bit of cream. And I love this as a thickener, so it's beautiful that way. Now, if you wanna use something else as a thickener, instead of cream, you could probably add about a cup of yogurt. But the whole idea behind this, why I chose not to do that, is I chose to use cashew nuts instead as my base. So I'm gonna just let this cook up for just a minute more. And then we're going to add two more dried spices to this and a little bit of herb before we add more beautiful potatoes. Okay, so our paste has been cooking down for about two minutes or so. And as you can see, we have some beautiful oils being released and that's the stage we want at this point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some turmeric powder. And what is the amount I'm going to add? I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon. So I'm slightly going to drizzle that in, like just like that. Next, I'm going to add some Kashmiri chili powder, and I'm going to add one teaspoon. Now, Kashmiri chili powder is not as hot as your regular chili powder, but it adds a beautiful color to this recipe. So it's not going to be super duper hot. So now we're going to get this nicely incorporated here. How gorgeous does this look? Oh yes, we do. Beautiful. Now I would like to thin this gravy out just a bit, so we need to thin out the space a little and get all the goodness up from the bottom of this pan. Yep, because that's where all our flavor is. Yep, give it a nice good little scrape. That's what we want, there we go. Flavors are blooming. Look at the color in this pan, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So now we're going to add 
I would say around about, you can eyeball it. I'm gonna start adding just about a cup of water. I'm going to slowly blend that in. And again, be very gentle, be gentle. You don't want splashes. Look at the gorgeous color. The gravy is looking amazing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water. Probably gonna add another, let's start with like a half a cup. There we go. So, so far we've got a cup and a half of water in here. Beautiful. And our gravy is still nice and thick, gorgeous. So I just wanna thin this out just a tad more. And then we're gonna add those beautiful potatoes. So, just gonna finish that up. I added a little extra water. So you can say a total of about three cups. Exact measurements, by the way. Exact measurements that I've added in here. Now I'm going to add some salt to taste. Look at this beautiful curry. Gorgeous. Smooth. And now let's add some salt to taste. Now remember, I seasoned as I go, right, in layers, so we're not going to add too much. At this point, you can always come back and add more if need be. So, and again, taste for salt and adjust as you need. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to nestle in those gorgeous potatoes. Let's get those babies in here. We've got those potatoes, there we go. How gorgeous do they look? Oh, beautiful. And now, oh, that gravy does taste really good. I'm going to finish up with a tablespoon of kesari methi. Pop that into my hand like this. Once again, like I said, we're going to warm this up. Give it a nice little zhuzh like this. Make it into a fine powder. And we're going to just simply sprinkle that along in here. And at this point, we're going to go low and slow. So I put a lid on this baby. Keep it on here. And I'm on the lowest setting on my stove. I'm gonna check it back low and slow. I'm gonna go for about an hour to two hours, actually. I'm gonna try to push it to as close as two hours as I can go. And the key is, with dum alu, the process in which we eliminated, because we're all about non-complication, when this lid goes on, usually what happens is you seal around the edges here with a dough, just the same way you would do a biryani to keep all that moisture and that steam in here. But of course, this is good enough. We're gonna keep checking it and babysitting it. And this is precisely what we want, less complications. So I'll see you guys back in about an hour and a half to two. All right, folks, so it's been about two hours or so. We've had the damalu going. And I do have to say I did add water about twice during the process just to thin it out a little bit. So in the end, I first, I started with about four cups of water to thin it out. Then I ended up adding another two cups as we went along. Look at how beautiful, thick, and silky this gravy is. Look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just precisely what I'm looking for. Now it's time to get ready and garnish. Okay, so our dem alu is done and it is time to garnish. So here I've got a shade under a tablespoon of heavy cream. So I'm just going to slightly drizzle this in, starting from here. Here we go. I'm gonna drizzle that, drizzle that, drizzle that, drizzle that, drizzle that. All the way in. 
And there we go. How pretty does that look? Now we're going to finish with a bit of some chopped cilantro to add a little bit of green to this. Gonna add some color. Looking beautiful in there. Yes, we are. And I've got some slivered ginger slices. And there you have it. Dum alu a la mama style. Now I also had cooked up, I had actually sauteed some cashews and a little bit of ghee. So if you want, you can actually garnish with a little bit of these as well. Now, obviously, if you're allergic to nuts, you would want to mix this particular portion. And instead of using cashew nuts, you'd want to swap out wherever I use cashews and fix it up with yogurt in the very last stages of making the gravy. And we're looking beautiful. Our potatoes are all held together gorgeous. And we have a very slight Christmas to it that's kept the potatoes together from falling apart. And that is that secret of cornstarch. That really did do the trick. We're going to serve this up tonight with a bit of um, jira rice that I made. And I've drizzled a bit of saffron cream over the top. So let's get started. We've chosen to serve this dum alu with, I've made here a jira, simple, very simple jira rice. And of course, finished with a bit of saffron cream on the top, garnished with tomato, some freshly chopped cilantro, and of course, some toasted up cashew nuts. And of course, I toasted it, roasted it in some ghee. And of course, we've got a garnishing of some English cucumbers and red onions. And there you have it, damalu a la mama style. Now it's the moment of truth. Let's uh, do a taste test. Get in here and get a piece of that potato. And let's see, one with the trip. Perfectly seasoned. That saffron cream comes right out. Let me take another piece of this. Mm -mm -mm. Really, very good. That's a nice, beautiful piece right here. Let's see. Mm. Truly. I have to say, very good. Potatoes, so creamy, soft, but still beautifully held together. Look at this. And this is after two hours of cooking even though, look at that, still beautifully held together. And look at that gravy, beautiful and thick. Two hours of cooking. And that cornstarch trick, that really worked. And that's balance of flavors. The gravy is beautiful, it's thick, it's silky, smooth. And that potato, so, so, so creamy. Happy cooking, y'all. Phew, was that an amazing dish or what? I sure hope you like it and I sure hope you guys will try this. We have a ton of recipes on the channel and don't forget to look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, lots and lots of recipes here, right here on YouTube. And feel free to share us with your family, friends, Give us a like, a follow, and please subscribe. <laughs> Thank you guys once again. This is Mala coming to you from Mala's Kitchen to yours where everything happens a la Mala style.
Thank you.